Sorry to keep you waiting. Complicated business. Complicated. Thank you very much. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. Hi, my name is James Lillen. Um, I'm Monica Manny. Hi, I'm Connor Hoffman. I'm the president of the uh, College Republicans. Uh, I'm also the managing editor for uh, The Leader. I am a junior social work major. I'm a transfer student, and yeah. I am from Hamburg, New York. I am a triple major in acting, English, and women's and gender studies. I'm the president of Riders Ring and Sigma Tau Delta, and I um, enjoy long walks on the beach. I'm like a lot of Americans where we're not doing well momentarily <laughs> and hopefully that'll change within the next couple of decades but right now I think is the time for us to accept that it's okay to not be doing okay but for us to channel that not into apathy but into action and to find ways to make changes instead of to sort of wallow in sadness. I think a lot of people are saying like make sure you give them Donald Trump a chance, like allow him to, you know, show what he can do and show, you know, like, I don't know, show what he said he would do. But I think that's the scary thing about it. You know, I, I don't think that we should show, like allow him, even though he has the right, because he is the president elect, to do what he wants. I think that during his campaign, he showed us what kind of person he was and what he wanted to do, and he made it very clear. Um, so I think it's headed in a scary direction, definitely, just because of, you know, the promises that he made, and if he fulfills even half of those promises, it still is not gonna look good, so, not too good. Everything about conventional wisdom, sort of, as I call it, for uh, politics has been completely thrown out the window and in the trash. Um, you know, but my bet is I see that Donald Trump is not uh, going to keep true to all of his promises. I mean, we've already seen that he has flip-flopped on several of his very uh, huge campaign promises, but I don't really know where it's going to be. I mean, he still has Steve Bannon, his, his uh, I think, chief strategist, correct? Uh, chief strategist, uh, and Steve Bannon has horrible ties to uh, Breitbart and alt-right uh, publication. I think that right now we are experiencing something that very few people wanted to admit was a possibility because Republicans don't just control the Senate, uh, the House of Representatives, the presidency, but they are also on track to control the Supreme Court and <laughs> all, like I think 32 governorships, most of the local state houses. And so I think that um, where I see politics going in the short term is increased partisan divide. I think we're going to continue to be a divided uh, country. I think that we've gotten to the point where polarization in America is so uh, evident and strong in our society that uh, there's always going to be another half of the society almost uh, that doesn't agree with what's being done and that wants to go up and protest. Um, hopefully it, in four years we are different than we are now because following the um, election, uh, as you can see in the media and things like that, things have gotten really bad and I think that the closet racist and you know people are homophobic and xenophobic and all the things like that were able to come forth just because they have someone on a, like a huge scale who allows it. So hopefully that'll kind of fall into the background but you know even personally, since the election, there have been so many attacks on like my identity as a woman, my identity as, you know, someone who's black, and it's just like, hopefully it'll it'll get better and all this will die down. But if it goes in opposite direction, then um, our country is headed backward. Basically, it's just headed back to where we started before all of our movements and things like that. So.
this this voter group that brought Donald Trump into power has always existed in politics. Yeah. Donald Trump has not created this racism. He has harnessed and uh, energized and mobilized these people uh, to go out and vote for him, obviously, and he won. This group has always been around in politics, but it has never really had a advocate for their ideas. When we look at the results, we have to decide, are we going to continue to say everyone's a racist or a sexist, or are we going to begin to treat them as people? Because we've made astounding social rights progresses over the last eight years under President Obama. The message that touched me most on election night, it wasn't from any of my liberal friends who were saying, I'm so happy to cast my vote for the first female president. It was from a uh, woman that I had worked with. It was a very long status about how this was the most painful, uh, difficult election of her life. But in the end, she is a single mother working two jobs with two children, and she had to think about which candidate was going to offer her change, which candidate was going to affect positive change in her life. And she ended up casting her ballot for Trump, not because she thought that Clinton was evil, but just because she was a woman who did not see any of the economic progress that had been made under Obama going to her, because most of it has gone to the top 1% or the top 10%. She was somebody who hasn't seen her life improve at all, and so in the end, casted her vote that way. Um, I think one of, the, one of the biggest things is that people don't really think about, but is um, really a big deal, is like the mental health of all these groups. Like a phrase that I use a lot is like black mental health, and that's just because I identify with the black community. Um, but, and really women's mental health, oh my goodness, like, knowing that someone would <laughs> say that what he did was locker talk and knowing that there are so many people who have who have experienced that. Um, so I guess women's mental health and black mental health is such a, a huge thing. And the fact that people also like to act like it's not real, I think. And it's just like, you have to understand that this takes a toll on these marginalized groups. It really does to see how somebody would offend a group and another group and another group and then see people vote for them. It's like, not only is my mental health messed up because this person is run the, running the country, but because there are people in my immediate proximity, people who I'm related to, people who I'm friends with, who care, who don't care about me and care more about this politician who has done all these terrible things. So I think that it's important to acknowledge the, you know, the, the hurt that people are going through in their mental health and emotionally and honestly being sick, you know, off of these things. So I think that that is important to acknowledge and pe important for people to keep in mind, you know, when discussing these things with other people. Um, because I think a lot of people are like, uh, people are protesting and upset because they didn't get their way. And it's, no, we're not protesting and upset because we didn't get our way. We're protesting and upset because we're fighting for our humanity and our safety and people are telling us like, stop being a brat. And that's hard to, to be like, I wanna feel safe. I wanna feel like a human. I wanna feel like a citizen. And people are saying, stop whining. And it's like, okay, well, I don't think I'm whining. I think that I'm, I'm fighting for my humanity. And um, just, you know, people trying to hush people like, you know, and silence people when we just want to be people and <laughs> considered people. So, yeah. My biggest concern is that right now we, as a campus, are a huge echo chamber. Um, that's not to say there aren't people who support Trump because the people who do support Trump are very loud about it. And unfortunately, we've had a lot of incidents on campus where um, People are like walking back to their houses and they get followed by pickup trucks flying the Trump Pence sign and the Confederate flag and they get yelled at. We've had racial slurs yelled at members on campus. So that's not to say we are an entirely liberal campus. But we are too content to go to, um, to, go to clubs and to go to meetings and to just talk about our views. And so I really want to urge everybody, whether you are um, writing, acting, performing, singing, whatever your, whatever your small form of resistance is to these ideas, make sure that you look beyond people that agree with you and that you really, and that you understand that you can't change minds 
without understanding the minds you're trying to change.